This bizarre renaissance painting is actually part of an award-winning ad campaign that grew a perfume company's sales by over 600%. This campaign, which was created by an agency called Quark, based in New York City, is a great example of making diamonds out of coal, so to speak. Let me explain why. Generally speaking, if you've seen one perfume ad, then you've seen them all. Many fragrance companies seem to use the same aesthetic white or muted colors, a well-lit product photo with abstract product descriptors like essence, fresh, and daring. And without a logo, their websites are virtually indistinguishable from each other. On the exact opposite end of the spectrum, we have Etat Libre d'Orange, who made the brave choice, by recommendation from their creative agency, to promote their fragrance's negative product reviews. That's right, they took authentic bad reviews and put them front and center for the world to see. As the agency explains, they wanted to invert what was expected of a perfume ad. Much like a classical painting, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Similarly, a perfume review is a subjective interpretation of a product based on a personal preference. So instead of trying to portray themselves as a high-class and pristine beauty product, they leaned into the fun and laughably obscure reviews their customers left in the past. Furthermore, the use of French Renaissance paintings linked the ads to the perfume company's French heritage. In a saturated marketplace of perfume ads going left, Etat Libre went right. In the first 45 days after launching, the campaign increased the company's sales by 611%. According to the agency's self-reported numbers, the campaign generated 19.4 million total impressions with a media spend of just $18,937.07. This means they achieved a CPM of just 98 cents. For comparison, the average CPM in the beauty industry is $7.19, according to WebF. This is across all ad objectives, which makes for a difficult comparison. However, based on my personal experience running campaigns that use conversion and traffic objectives, I can confirm they achieved an exceptionally high reach based on their spend. In order to quantify the value of this campaign's virality, we can take the 19.4 million impressions and measure that against the average industry CPM of $7.19, which gives us an earned media value of $139,486. In other words, a 7x return on investment based on their $18,000 in media spend. Of course, this is just the estimated value of the impressions served if they were intending on running brand awareness ads. It does not consider the impact on revenue, so let's take a look at that next. Their Facebook ad strategy included four components, a conversion campaign, a traffic campaign, a retargeting campaign, and an abandoned cart campaign. It's safe to assume the conversion campaign was optimized for a purchase event maximizing the number of direct-to-consumer sales through their e-commerce website. The traffic marketing objective is used to drive clicks to the website, but does not optimize for sales. Both of these two campaigns used a variety of these Renaissance painting ads, and over time, the agency experimented with different creatives, audiences, copy, and CTAs to discover what combination produced the best results. People who visited the website but did not place an order were served retargeting ads through a separate campaign structure. Particular attention was paid to people who added a product to their cart but decided not to complete their purchase. These potential customers were close to pulling the trigger and may simply need a little encouragement to finish the process. Based on my experience, these types of deep funnel retargeting campaigns often convert at a much higher rate and with a much higher return on ad spend compared to cold prospecting ads, making it a good use of ad spend. After clicking on an ad, a prospect is taken to a landing page that looks like this, except the feature image updates dynamically based on the particular ad creative the person clicked on. This creates what some people refer to as ad scent, meaning the ad and landing page look similar enough to create a cohesive user experience. It looks like this is being achieved using UTM parameters. Notice the UTM dynamic labeled Bad Reviews 2020, Dog, Fat Electrician. I'm guessing there's a script on the landing page that updates the image based on this UTM parameter. Speaking of UTMs, we can decode that their analytics account looks something like this, which tells their marketing team that this particular user is visiting their site from Facebook, from a paid campaign, after seeing an ad in this placement, and these are the names of the specific campaign, ad set, and ad that that user clicked from. This allows them to pinpoint what marketing efforts are producing the best results. With regards to the rest of their tech stack, they're using Shopify as their web hosting service, which makes perfect sense for an e-commerce store, using the Impulse theme, Shogun for ad hoc landing page design, and Klaviyo as their email marketing solution, which is known for its behavioral segmentation features, for example, when people abandon their cart, like we learned from before. Some ads take us directly to a specific product page, while others take us to a collection page with multiple offers. Perhaps the product pages are being used for retargeting, but I'm not too sure. The collection pages, though, are interesting because of the offers at varying price points that would be appealing to a variety of customers. A full bottle of perfume costs north of $100, which is a pretty big 
commitment for a fragrance you cannot smell through a digital store. To address this potential objection, they offer less expensive discovery kits and even a $4 sample bottle so customers can make a small commitment while still entering the company's customer database. In a day and age where skepticism is high on social media and where advertisers typically receive lots of criticism in their ad comments, Quark and Etat Libra knocked it out of the park with their audience. Which just goes to show how transformational marketing results are still out there, they're still possible if you just apply some creativity. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my video on Spotify and the creative ways that they're using data in their marketing campaigns. Thanks for watching.